All right then. Well, I'm gonna go to the trip with my mom. You stay at home, okay? Huh? I was completely speechless. But this is the prize which I won at the contest, you know? Besides, besides if the winner doesn't use the ticket, then that ticket would be invalid. I tried to say that, but my husband Mike says something so outrageous over what I was trying to say. If you don't like it, then we'll get a divorce. Excuse me? I'm saying that if you can't obey with what I'm saying, then we'll get a divorce. My affectionate feelings that I had for my husband instantly cooled down with these words. My name is Sasha and I am a 30-year-old office worker. I went to an all-girls school from middle school until university and entered the society without ever having had a proper conversation with a man. And my work was so busy that I didn't have time to fall in love at all. And before I knew it, I was 25 years old. I thought this was a bad idea, so a friend of mine took the initiative and set up a blind date for me. And then I had my first boyfriend, who was a freelancer, but lied about being an office worker and also became unemployed after we started to date. I realized that he was going to completely depend on me and live off of me, so I broke up with him as soon as I could. Because my first boyfriend was such a person like that, I became even more of averse to men and couldn't trust men that easily. Therefore, I finally reached the age of 30 without having any boyfriend at all. My parents were even more worried about me than I was. Both my father and mother had already been married for several years when they were my age. So, they were feeling quite impatient as well. Nowadays, it is not too late to get married in 30s, but back then, the latest age a person could get married was around 25 years old. So, my father brought several offers of arranged marriages to me, saying that if I didn't have any boyfriend or partner, he would find one for me. At first, I turned them all down several times, but Gradually, I felt bad about continuing to turn down the offers that my father would bring me. Besides, I felt with my own skin that both my father and mother wished me, their only daughter, to be happy. That's why I decided to take it positive and go on a blind date to show my parents that I am also grateful of them. That is when I met Mike, who later became my current husband. Mike is 30 years old and he was the same age as me. He too had attended a boys' school all his life and had never had a chance to fall in love with a girl. What I liked about him was that he was very protective of his parents and took very good care of them. Even after he became an adult, he regularly visits his parents' house, gifts them trips, and goes on trips with them. He seems to have a good personality and works properly in a company. I've gotten his business card and I've made sure of it. I was very cautious because I had made a mistake with my previous boyfriend. Even though I was being cautious and checking carefully, there seemed to be nothing strange about Mike. I'm sure he's fine. That's what I thought to myself. And the two of us continued to date. He took the lead, as I was shy, and took very good care of me. I became more and more attracted to him. After two years of dating, Mike proposed to me, and we got married. My parents were crying and was being very happy when they heard that I was finally getting married. I truly felt that not only had I met a good man, but I was also very happy to have been able to take care of my parents like this. And after the wedding ceremony, we went on our honeymoon and started our life happily as a husband and wife. Since my husband and I were both working, we shared the housework. My husband is not a good cook, so I did the cooking, and he did the laundry and cleaning. We got along well as a couple, 
and I think we had a happy married life supporting each other. But after just one year of marriage, things changed. It all started when my father in law passed away due to an illness. After that, my husband began to care excessively about my mother in law, Bianca, who was left all alone. On Mike's days off, he would go to his parents in law's house to visit Bianca, and he and Bianca would sometimes go out together on their own. Sometimes he drops by Bianca's house after work and eats dinner on his own with her. And sometimes he would go on a trip with just Bianca. I saw my husband leaving on the morning of the trip with his travel bag, and I had asked him cluelessly if he was going on a business trip. But to that, he would say, No, I'm traveling with my mother to New York. I was really surprised to hear that at that time. First of all, I just couldn't believe that he was going to go on a trip without letting me know about it, and then to keep quiet about it. If I hadn't asked, he wasn't going to tell me, huh? No matter how much you care about your own mother, can you really disrespect your own wife like that? That's how I felt. It's not that he totally ignores me, but to this extent, I think he has gone beyond being family oriented to being a mama's boy. But even so, my husband does not seem to want to change his attitude or lifestyle. In fact, I don't think he even thinks how he's acting is wrong. In any case, I decided to compromise and spend my time with him for the time being, thinking that this was how he was. If we divorced after only one year of marriage, I would really feel bad for my parents, and if we had a child, my husband's attitude might change again. It's not right to divorce so easily. I spent my days thinking like that. I also decided to take up a hobby of my own and have recently become addicted to entering in contests to get prizes. I have been entering various contests, getting prizes, and writing reviews, which is surprisingly fun. And if I keep at it, I often win prizes like cosmetics and food. And then, on one of the contests I'd entered in, I won a pair of airline tickets. To Guam. I was so surprised that I had to reread my email about three times because I had never won such a big prize before. I checked the contents of the email thoroughly just to make sure that it wasn't a fraud. It didn't seem to take me to any suspicious links, nor did it ask me for my credit card number or anything like that. So that means that I really won the Guam trip. It seems that I have to contact the airline in advance to redeem the travel tickets. Who should I go with? My husband just recently went on a trip to New York with Bianca. Shall I ask my friends or my parents? Ah, yes! I thought to myself, and I decided to give this travel tickets to my parents for them to enjoy the trip. Then, I went to my parents' house and informed them about it. Well, it's been years since we traveled abroad. Are you sure about this? This is something that you won, Sasha. It's okay, it's okay, don't worry about it. Let me at least spoil you guys once in a while. All right, well, thank you. I'm glad to see my parents be happy like that. I thought so, but. Hmm? Huh? What's wrong, Dad? This ticket is valid only for the person who won the tickets and is non transferable, and you're not allowed to sell it, is what it says here. What? Does that mean I can't give this as a gift to you both? Yeah, it seems so. Oh man. Haha. <laughs> ah well, it can't be helped. Well, you did win it, honey, so why don't you go with Mike? Since my parents said so, I finally decided that I'd go with my husband. And when I came home from my parents' house that night, I found a woman's coat by the front door. This coat looked familiar. Yes, it was Bianca's coat. When I went to the living room, I saw Bianca watching the TV. 
Oh, Sasha, did you just get home? It's your day off, so what were you doing out so late at night? Oh, I'm sorry. I had no idea that you came here, Bianca. Oh, what are you trying to say? Is it wrong of me to come to my son's house? No, it's not. I think Bianca was a little kinder to me when my father-in-law was still alive. But ever since he passed away, she has been very strict and cold to me. Oh, what's this? What did you buy? Bianca seemed to have noticed the bag I had on my arm. In the bag was a guidebook for a trip to Guam that I bought on my way home. Oh, this is nothing. Just show it to me. Huh, why? Just show it! And saying that, Bianca forcibly took the bag from me. Huh? Guam? Are you just trying to treat yourself? What are you doing with Mike's earnings? Huh? What the hell is she saying? I've never ever depended on Mike's earning like this before. I won a pair of travel tickets in a contest, so I thought I would go on the trip with my husband. Oh, really? Is that so? Wow, a prize, huh? Bianca suddenly changed her mood and got excited. I have a bad feeling about this. Then, my husband came into the living room. Apparently, he was taking a bath. Oh, Sasha, welcome back. I mean, what's wrong? I heard my mother's happy voice all the way from the bath. Oh, Mikey, listen. Sasha won a trip to Guam in a contest. Wow, that's great. Uh, y yeah. So, I decided to go with you, Mike, and I bought a guidebook for that, too. How many people can go on that trip? It's a pair of travel tickets, so it would just be the two of us. My husband fell silent for a bit and looked over at Bianca's face. Bianca seems to suck up to my husband, showing her eyes widely like a dog waiting to be fed. Okay, well then, I'm gonna go to the trip with my mom. You stay at home, okay? Huh? I was just completely speechless. I had no idea that Mike was this much of a mama's boy. This is what I won from the contest, you know? So what? We're a couple, so what's yours is mine, right? And what's mine is my mom's. No, what kind of logic does he have? Uh, no way. Besides, you and Bianca just went on a trip just a few weeks ago. This and that has nothing to do with each other. Yes, that's right. Mike paid for that one, and besides, it was a domestic trip. I haven't been on an overseas trip in years. Wow, I'm so excited. She's already planning to go, huh? Hey, I didn't even agree to the fact that you both will be the ones going to the trip, you know? Besides, besides, that ticket would be invalid if the winner won't be there. I was about to say so, but my husband says something outrageous, trying not to hear what I was about to say. If you don't like it, then we'll get a divorce. Excuse me? I said, if you can't listen and obey to what I say, then we'll get a divorce. I never thought he would say that. With these words, my affectionate feelings toward my husband instantly cooled down. I understand how it is. Do whatever you want. Then why didn't you just say so quickly? You're just so selfish. Both Mike and Bianca looked victorious, as if they had won a huge fight. Then, while reading the guidebook they had taken from me, they began to happily plan out their travel plans together. And I was beginning to think about my post-divorce plans. Later on, my husband told me to make sure I contacted the airline, so I did as I was told. But it was just a confirmation. Um, I'm not allowed to give away these tickets to your own husband or other relatives even if I can't go, right? When I asked that, the operator replied, I'm sorry, but you're not allowed to give away the tickets even to your family or your relatives. Well, of course, that makes sense. 
Hearing that, I told the operator, Well then, I would like to decline the airline tickets that I won in the contest, and hung up the phone. Then I told my husband, I call for you, and here are the terms and conditions in the tickets, so please check the details. Then my husband scoffed as he said, I don't have to read the terms and conditions, and left the tickets on the shelf. It probably would never have occurred to him that those tickets were invalid. I reported this incident to my parents. I asked them to help me because I wanted to make the day of Mike and Bianca's trip the day I moved out from the house. After hearing what had happened, my father was shocked and said, I never thought that Mike was such a person like that. I mean, it was my father who brought up the idea of the arranged marriage with Mike, so that's why he was more shocked. It's not your fault, Dad. He just started to show who he really was recently, you know? I made my father try not to worry that it was his fault and calmed him down. On the day of the trip, my husband was in a great mood and was getting ready to leave. I was also looking forward to seeing how he and Bianca would react at the airport. Well, I'm off then. Take care of the house while I'm gone. Mike says so with a huge grin on his face. Yeah, have fun! My husband looked a little surprised as I saw him off with a huge smile on my face. Then, right after my husband left, my parents arrived to the house. They carried my belongings into the car and we went over to the new place I was going to move into. I had actually started looking for a room the moment I became fed up with my husband. I found a nice apartment near my office and decided to move into it immediately. I moved my belongings and got a comfortable and quiet room. About two hours later, my husband called me. Hello? Oh, hey, what's going on? They said that our airline tickets are invalid. Well, yes, that's right. If the winner doesn't accompany, then the tickets are invalid. Huh? I didn't hear anything about that. I told you, didn't I? I told you to check the terms and condition. It's all written right there. Y you've got to be kidding me. I wouldn't even read that. Well then, that's just your fault for not reading it, right? It's the same as someone who gets sued and says they didn't know anything about the law. Th then wh what am I supposed to do? I already got a hotel in Guam. They told me I'd have to pay for our own ticket fees. Like I said, it's none of my business anymore, so you and Bianca should just take care of it. I said that and hang up the phone. Then ten minutes later, my husband called again. What now? Hey, why can't I pay with your card? Huh? My card? What do you mean? The card that you're using as a sub. With panic, I checked the drawers and found out that my card, which I have been using as a sub, was gone. You took the card without my permission? I was only borrowing it for a little while. But I was told by the airline staff that I can't use this card. What the hell is going on? Are you stupid? If you're not the owner of the card, you can't use it. Th that's... But in the internet... Huh? Internet? Oh, uh, no. And he hanged up the phone. No way. I immediately checked my credit card statement for the credit card I used as a sub. Then I found a list of unknown statement that I had no recollection of using it. Then I remembered that my husband had been buying a lot of clothes and other things recently. He must have used my card to get those without my permission. I immediately stopped the card, and I took a screenshot of the statement history. With this, I will definitely charge him later. A few days later, I received a call from my husband after his three days and two nights trip to Guam. Hey, what is the meaning of this? I don't see any of your stuff and belongings in our house anymore. And you left the divorce papers on the table. What the hell are you thinking? Well, I mean what I mean. I can't go on living with a mama's boy like you who prioritizes his own mother and ignores his own wife, and to a thief like you using my credit card without 
any permission. What? If you won't sign the divorce papers, then let's fight over court. C court? Oh, are you in trouble? If people at work find out about this... I see, then I'll request my divorce through my lawyer, so you better quietly obey to the request. N no way. My husband reluctantly accepted the terms and agreed to the divorce. He agreed to divorce me on the condition that there would be no division of property and that he would also pay me for the credit card bills he used without my permission. But my revenge does not end there. I wouldn't say anything about what had happened, but I didn't know what my father, who had brought this marriage proposal to me, would do or say. And sure enough, my ex-husband called me. Hey, this is not what we agreed on. Everyone at work knows about what happened. Now, they talk about me behind my back and I'm known as a mama's boy and a thief. And now, I can't walk with my head held high in my company. Oh, what a pity. But I didn't say anything about any of this, you know. Did you forget that so many people were involved in our marriage? Oh. Yes, this marriage was set up through a connection between my father who is a general manager of the department in a company, and my ex-husband's boss, who is a department head in his company. My father and my ex-husband's boss were great friends, and our blind date was set up from the fact that my ex-husband's boss had a good bachelor staff who was working under him. So this means that, hearing what had happened, my ex-husband's boss was very angry with my ex-husband over this matter. It seems like Mike has been removed from the career track and is being looked at coldly by all the employees around him. As for Bianca, it seems that this incident was leaked out to her neighbors, and all the neighbors have started to avoid her too, so she now shuts herself inside the house. Well, they both got what they deserved, so I have no sympathy for them whatsoever. As for me, I put in a lot of effort at work and got a promotion. I got a raise in salary too, so to celebrate, I took my parents on an overseas trip. We went to Italy, which we all had wanted to go to for a long time, and made good memories as a family. A lot had happened this time, but I would like to use it as food for thought to find a good man and find a better love next time. I am surprised that he was not only a mama's boy, but also a thief. If it comes to that point, there is nothing anyone can do for him anymore. I'm glad Sasha's family got along well and finally got to go on a family vacation to Italy. I hope Sasha, who is kind and family oriented, will find someone better and wonderful. Thank you for watching until the end. Please subscribe to our channel. We hope to see you in our next video.